First, as you probably know, after 43 years here at New Center, Maine, Pat Callahan is retiring at the end of the week. His career is unmatched. No one in this state has worked as a television anchor longer than he has. For three decades, he and Cindy Williams anchored the flagship 6 o'clock newscast, and for many years, he and Cindy anchored the 11 o'clock news together as well. Eventually, Cindy moved to a day shift, and in the years that followed, Pat anchored the 11 o'clock news at various times with Kathleen Shannon, Shannon Moss, and Caroline Cornish. Before Pat slips out the door for the last time on Friday, we wanted to sit down with those three so they could shine a light on some sides of Pat you never knew. Let me ask, and I'll start with you, Shannon, what was your first reaction when you heard Pat's going to be leaving and stepping away finally? Ugh, a loss. Such a loss for Maine. I mean, great for him, obviously, <laughs> wonderful. He's retired, and Karen, his beautiful family. But boy, will he be missed on the airways and with viewers. He's just, I mean, just a broadcast legend in this state. He'll be missed for sure. Caroline? Yeah, I mean, such a huge loss for the state. I also thought to myself, good for him. Because I feel like when you've had a career and you've done everything like Pat has, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of hang it up and be able to say, I've been there, I've met all these presidents, I've <laughs> talked to all these people, I've met people from all walks of life, my kids are grown up, it's time just to, to relax and enjoy. So that was, that was my thinking. And enjoy his family, yeah. Kevin? I was kind of thinking, he doesn't have to deal with anybody like that <laughs> anymore. Uh, oh, no. he misses us, Kathy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes, probably, right? I, I think, you know, I think people sometimes get a glimpse at how fun he is. Geeky fun, often, but, but so fun. And amen, brother. Like, go out and enjoy. That's a great point about what he's like when he's not on the anchor desk. And there's not a big difference. There's not a big difference. It's not like right. there's a, an act that he's putting on when he's on the air. But what would you say he, that people who watch him on TV may not see of Pat's personality? I have to go first? I was going to say, I'll answer. I'll answer. I know, I got one too. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I mean, off the air, I mean, talk about wit. I mean, again, you saw it on the air, but oh my gosh. Such a strong wit, so funny, so personable. Oh my God, singing? People don't know, that, right, that he can oh, yeah, sing. He can the totally folk, sing. Oh my God, the folk music that he loves, and the Beatles, and the politics, and the And the so comic hobbies. books. Oh, and so the comic books. So that's where he comes into my world, because my husband is a huge comic that's nerd, too, right. and also used to work here behind the scenes, as we all know here. And so they still will text each other a little comic Oh comic nerdy God. things Seriously? to each other. Yeah. Such I mean, when Adam West died way. from Batman, oh, it, was, well, it was a thing. Flowers were sent. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, there's the serious side, too. I was anchoring with him on the day of the Newtown shootings oh. at Sandy Hook. Oh. Mm. And my kids were five. They were in kindergarten. And Pat's a father. You know, here we are. We're parents. And, you know, the... the the news um, came in and just unrelenting horror and grief. I was in particular struggling getting through a script and when it went to a soundbite, he reached across, you know, he put his arm around me and he said, our role is to hold it together so that we can help the viewers process. Mm. And then at 631, you and I are going to go into that hallway and we're going to fall apart. And it was just what I needed. And it's true. It's what the larger family, the viewers of Maine, needed in those moments. And I think you probably have stories like that where he, you know, really helped us hold it together as the internal newsroom family, but also the larger main family. Yeah. Cosmic professional. Yeah. Always. And that's something that, that when I was thinking about Pat and, and who he is and, and as a person and as an anchor, it was that sense of you are your reputation, you are to the viewer and to the people at home, what they see on TV is what they believe you to be. And you always, everywhere in your life, need to kind of hold yourself 
to that standard. That standard yes. Um, and he does. He he did, and he is. That's why when you say is there a difference, there's not because he is the person that he is on TV. And and my story is not as moving as yours, but I remember being at Hillary Clinton's campaign headquarters in New Hampshire when there had been a bomb threat there. And I was, as you guys know, full squirrel, as they like to call me here, <laughs> running around like a little squirrel, like, oh my gosh, there's all this stuff going on. Totally focused. And totally, totally, totally focused. focused on the thing ahead. <laughs> and they had had a news conference, and we had to do a live shot five minutes later. And when I was just as shaken up as everyone else. And I'm going, I'm right. just going through this whole thing, and I'm like, what am I going to say? How am I going to say? Huh? And, and we're about to get, I'm like, I don't have a script. And Pat just looks at me, and he goes, Caroline, do you know what they said during the press conference? And I said, yes. And he goes, so you can tell people what they said during the press conference. And I went, yes. He goes, OK, then do it. And it, it's, and to me, that was the best live shot advice I'd ever received in my life, because it was just cut the noise, right. what's the point, deliver the news. And so I did. And having him by my side, I knew that if I fell, he was going to catch me. But because he was there, I didn't fall. I was here at a, a time of my life that was so many changes. And so, you know, I, I got married. Pat was at my wedding. Um, when I was pregnant um, with my firstborn, uh, Pat was there the next day visiting at Maine Medical Center, um, holding Quinn, who's now 18. To me, that just that's so special, and that never goes away. And we were talking about Pat and Karen, the babysitter. So Pat right. and his wife <laughs> yes. love babies. So I think all of us have had our children babysat yep. by Pat and Karen Callahan. And I yeah. remember when my daughter was born, and and he made the offer. I was like. Okay, and one of you two, I can't remember which one it was, was like, no, that's, that's he legit. Needs it. He oh, needs yeah, it. Yeah, he'll they, be, yeah. They, they, be they, mad if right, you do if not accept that. that. It must have been you, because I think that. Yes. Karen and so we, we yep. accepted the offer, yep. and they are great babysitters, yes. and our, our children are, I mean, mine aren't quite, my daughter isn't quite as old as your kids, but they're all growing up just fine. They made it. <laughs> so. yeah, and we'll have more of our conversation with Kathy, Caroline, and Shannon tomorrow. You'll see what Shannon calls the greatest blooper ever. And we'll be sitting down with Pat himself Wednesday and Thursday here on 207. He and I had a lot to talk about because we go back together here at New Center, Maine, 40 so sometimes, years. Uh, I'll ask him about his early GN years, if he ever thought he'd end up staying here for decades, film. and why he never pursued the job he would have been perfect for, that of rock and roll disc jockey. Our conversation with Pat Wednesday and Thursday here on 207.